Can your family eat real food for less than $1 per meal? This is a question that my family's answered with a resounding yes for a lot of years, but for the next couple of weeks, we are answering that question in a very public and transparent way, which I'm really excited about. I'm Steph from Cheapskate Cook, and our mission is to empower you to save money and eat healthy. So we're doing this challenge called Real Food Cheap, which means our family of five big eaters is eating real food for $90 a week. This works out to about $360 a month and about 85 cents per person per meal. That's less than the cost of the dollar menu at the drive-thru. So our whole point is that you can eat well and you don't have to spend a whole lot of money because this isn't just a drive through menu. This is real food, lots of fruits and vegetables, clean meats, and even some organics. So I'm excited to share with you what we do. The reason why we're doing this challenge in a transparent way is to show you exactly what it looks like. So some of the messy stuff, some of the mistakes that we make along the way, and that way you can know that even if it doesn't look perfect, you can save money and eat healthy. So some things that we are doing is that every week on cheapskatecook.com we share our menu, like what we actually ate, not just what we plan to eat because menu plans don't always work out. And we're sharing with you exactly what we bought and how much it cost. This week we started out with a fairly well-stocked kitchen, so instead of following the $90 a week budget, I actually took most of the things that we had around the house and calculated it all out um, to what it would be worth and then subtracted that from our weekly grocery budget. So we had just bought some chicken and some beef and we had some apples and squash and stuff like that and I took that out of our grocery budget allotment, so we actually only had $20 a week for groceries this week. That also meant that we had a pretty well-stocked kitchen, so we didn't have to buy a whole lot. It did encourage me to be creative with our meals because I only had $20 if I forgot something or needed to grab something at the store. We made two trips this week, one to Kroger and one to Aldi. At Kroger we found some greens that were on clearance, they were organic, and it was like a whole pound box of them, and those were marked down to $2.99, which is a really great price for organic greens. So we took those, and even though clearance means that they're kind of on their way out, we went ahead and used them in soups and sauteed veggies, and then we froze it. Freezing the like baby greens like these were is really easy. We just put the box in the freezer and you're done. And then we can use them to cook, um, to saute stuff, and we can use it in smoothies, which is our favorite way to get greens because who doesn't love vegetables that taste like fruit? And then at Aldi, we found just a couple of staples. Most of it went towards my son's birthday, which is coming up, and we wanted to make a special cake for him, but we also needed like eggs and some butter and milk and whatever. So that worked out to be about $20 for this week. We also bought some tortilla chips at Aldi, which are not necessarily a real food, but they fall under our 80-20 rule, which means that 80% of the time, our food is good, wholesome, wonderful food, and 20% of the time we reserve for pizza and birthday cake at parties and the occasional ice cream and tortilla chips. If you check the link in the description, it will give you exactly what we bought at Aldi and how much it cost, and it will also share our menu, like what we actually ate, not just what we planned to eat. So generally speaking, we kept it pretty simple. We like a lot of snacky lunches, we had some beans, that kind of thing. 
and I share every single meal that I make on our blog on that post, but I also share on Instagram and Facebook in the story section. Um, in real time, I just share, take a picture of what we're eating. It's not always pretty and it's not always Pinterest worthy, but that way it's just sharing what's actually happening in our life and sometimes it's like, hey, we were in the car and we ate bread and apples because you know, we weren't gonna stop somewhere, so that's what we ate for dinner. We also had some dinner guests this week, so I wanted to take a minute and share with you how you can host people inexpensively and still serve them good food when you are on a tight budget. So generally speaking, one of my favorite meals to serve guests is soup and homemade bread. This is because soup is really inexpensive and it's easy to make ahead of time. So you can throw it together in the crock pot or the instant pot. You can make it the day ahead of time and then just warm it up. And usually that's even better because the flavors all really kind of come together overnight. And then bread, if you are already making homemade bread, then it's no big deal to just throw together a loaf and then it's extra special. And who doesn't love homemade bread? If the homemade bread is intimidating to you, you can also try biscuits or muffins or something like that. You can also just buy bread because who doesn't love any kind of bread ever? So that's how I like to do it generally speaking. But then when we did our Cheapskate Whole30, we discovered that um, hosting people when you have um, like when you're avoiding grains or gluten or dairy or whatever, it can get really complicated and expensive. So we found kind of our base hosting meal that works pretty much across the board for diet requirements. And that is we make a whole chicken and I like to make the spatchcock version of it, which I will link my directions to that. There's a really quick video that tells you all about that. And that is great because you can cook a whole chicken in under one hour. It's fantastic, we love it. And then we can use the leftovers throughout the week. We can use the bones for bone broth and then we have soup later on, it's really great. And then we serve some kind of vegetable, whether that's roasted vegetable or a salad or something like that. Really it's whatever we found on sale at the time. And then we have some kind of starch. So depending on the needs of your guests and what you feel up to, that can be like, um, like this past week we did mashed butternut squash because that's what we happened to have and everyone thought it was great. You can do baked sweet potatoes, you can do rice, whatever you need to. You can add homemade bread if you don't want to do soup, but your guests can have bread. Just make it work for you. But that's what we found is kind of our go-to and that helps take the intimidation out of hosting people and helps us host people more often because it's not that big a deal anymore. So that was our first official week on Real Food Cheap. You can follow along with this challenge on the blog. You can follow the hashtag Real Food Cheap on Instagram or Facebook. You can get email updates. Um, remember to like and subscribe to my channel and I'm going to share updates every week on how Real Food Cheap goes. Thanks for visiting my kitchen and I hope to chat with you again soon.